My name is given some. I believe in generosity and ambition and believe that everyone has an inherent wealth. A few months ago, as I was preparing for a mental health discussion, I came across a question that asks for some of the challenges that most individuals go through that will make them vulnerable to suicide and other mental health issues. As I was going through several readings to get precise information, I stumbled upon an article that spoke of a challenge to which I could personally relate, and that was identity crisis. This took me back to the year 2019, whereas the prospect of beginning my journey towards fulfilling my childhood dream of becoming a medical doctor was so thrilling that I couldn't wait to start college after completing high school in that particular year. I was excited to experience the lectures, the parties that almost everyone talked about, and of course, freedom from my parents' control. However, all of my excitement was dashed when my national results came in and I didn't have the grades to qualify for medical school. I was mentally distorted and I felt absolutely hopeless about my life and future in general. I recall my father telling me that I could still study something else and excel at it. So I went for public health. But as I began my freshman year, my mom convinced me to switch to medicine since she is a doctor and really wanted me to follow in her footsteps. Despite my several attempts of requesting for transfer, it didn't work, which devastated me even more. I hated myself for not getting good enough grades to pursue medicine, but I had no choice other than accepting the sad truth. Growing up, a significant part of my identity was my aspiration to become a medical doctor. But I couldn't achieve this dream as I missed the required pass marks in my final exams. This setback led to a period of personal conflict as I struggled to redefine myself. By then, I thought I was experiencing the normal stress of life while I was actually going through an identity crisis a period in which my reality did not align with the person I believed I was. Despite this inner confusion, I managed to mask it all with my joyful smile. I appeared very hopeful from the outside, but on the inside, I was in despair. Well, with time, I somehow managed to escape from the crisis. And I came to learn of three primary methods for dealing with an identity crisis, of which I had unknowingly worked on all of them, but only one was best for me. The first is what I call the mirroring method, an act of self-reflection that serves as a meaningful reminder to look inward and explore our constant thoughts and feelings, as it helps us understand our personal attributes. So while mirroring is a fantastic method to deal with an identity crisis, it didn't give me optimal results. So this took me to the second method, which I call the leaning on a shoulder method, an act of seeking support from the people we can rely on. For having a good social support influences how well we can deal with major transitions in life. In my case, I turned to my parents, for I needed comfort from what I was experiencing. They both had the same response. It's okay to feel the way you do with regard to the situation, but with time, you'll be fine. Well, that provided me with the necessary comfort and relief that I needed. But guess what? It was short-lived. Because the negative feelings returned whenever I was alone. At this point, I want you to understand that while an identity crisis is neither a mental diagnosis nor a medical problem, it can lead to other conditions such as anxiety and depression, which can also lead to suicide if not well addressed. This is relevant in our country, Tanzania. 
as the rate of depression in the general population is about 4.1%. While that of suicide has been constantly increasing from the year 2015 to 2019 by 0.6%. Highlighting the need to address issues related to identity crisis in order to promote mental health and well-being. With this knowledge, I realized how naive I was on the significance of seeking professional help from therapists by the time. Because mental health is still stigmatized in our community due to misinformation and misconceptions. But also, therapy services can be quite expensive, which further accelerates the issue. In spite of all that, my exposure to the world of psychology has made me appreciate the tremendous work done by therapists to create a safe space for our minds. Now this is where the third and the final method comes in, which I call hiking up for bliss. The one that gave meaning to my identity crisis. It describes the pursuit of joy and fulfillment in one's life. The word bliss denotes a great feeling of happiness or contentment in one's life. While hiking up conveys an intentional effort to find and cultivate happiness in one's life. To start, I made a list of things that excited me in my journal and realized that the most important thing was community work to me. As Mahatma Gandhi once said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. So I dedicated my spare time, particularly on weekends, to community work without compromising my academic routine. I began to feel useful both on and off campus as I was afforded with more opportunities to serve through leadership. I was elected to be the president and chairperson of students' clubs on one health and disease control at the same time, respectively. I was also invited to give educational talks in various gatherings, both physically and virtually. This way of life brought me so much fulfillment, and that was my bliss. I progressively felt freed from the feelings of emptiness and regret that I'd been experiencing. Instead, I felt positive about the future. With each passing day, I emerged as an active survivor rather than a passive victim, and I moved closer to what I believe is my destined path. My personal experience and other psychological concerns that I encountered in the society through my community work ignited a deep passion within me for mental health and counseling. I teamed up with like-minded friends who also had diverse mental health experiences and interests. And together we created an online initiative platform called Akili Recip, which combines the Swahili term Akili, meaning the mind, with an English term recipe, meaning a set of instructions for preparing a particular dish, including its ingredient. And so we defined Achille recipe as ingredients of the mind. We aimed to raise youth awareness on mental health issues by providing a safe space where youth could not only get positive insights on how to promote their mental health, but also learn from other people's experiences that difficult circumstances can lead to better attitude and perspectives. Thanks to the platform, my life opened up to more opportunities. I got a chance to be enrolled into the mentorship program of the research and training unit at the Miremba National Mental Health Hospital. Additionally, I was fortunate to partner with HAYAR, a UK-based startup application to lead focus group research on self-guided therapy in Tanzania. Due to our common interest in making mental health affordable through technology and evidence-based therapy. Together we aim to have a global impact and make a difference in the communities we work. 
And finally, here I am today on this outstanding platform, delivering a valuable talk to all of these brilliant minds. It's a milestone for me, one that I can proudly share with my mother. As I'm now following in her footsteps, not as a medical doctor, but as someone different in my career, as a public health officer and a mental health advocate. A journey that has taught me valuable lessons, first on subjectivity, whereas different people have different perspectives and approaches to coping with different challenges. Meaning that what may work for one person might not necessarily work for another just as I tried with different methods to coping with my identity crisis. The hiking up for bliss method was the most effective for me, while the other two methods were not as friendly at the time. But that does not mean they won't work on someone else. Therefore, it's important to identify and adopt appropriate coping mechanisms that will work best for us without overlooking the fact that one size does not fit all. Diverse methods used at the same time can also work. The second lesson is on immutable possessions, in the sense that while tying our identity to external factors such as our entitlements, majors, or careers is compelling and brings a sense of belonging it puts us at a risk of mental confusion when these factors are taken away from us. Instead, we should focus on cultivating qualities such as compassion, proactivity, resilience, and creativity. These maintain stability and self-worth even in difficult circumstances. As Anthony D'Angelo famously said, the most important things in life are in things. Emphasizing the importance of cultivating positive qualities within ourselves and valuing meaningful experiences for true fulfillment in life. To sum up, having a sense of self and identity is crucial, even though it can waver due to various life transitions and lead to developmental crises. But this crisis could be an opportunity for you to evaluate your life and explore alternative ways of thinking, feeling, and living, and come to the conclusion that you are on the right track. Due to my strong faith, I believe that my identity crisis presented me with an opportunity to make critical changes in my life, and that makes it my blessing in disguise. To me, it was missing the qualifications of pursuing my dream career. To you, it could be something else. But learn to embrace it and see it as an opportunity to make necessary changes in your life that will make you happier. Thank you.